Oh, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the lawsuit that was filed against the performer Lizzo in July of 2023? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the summary of the lawsuit, then offer my analysis. Melissa Jefferson was born on April 27, 1988, in Detroit, Michigan. At the age of 10, her family moved to Houston, Texas. She studied the flute and became proficient with that instrument. At the age of 14, she started performing in a musical group and used the stage name Lizzo. Eventually, she attended the University of Houston, where she studied classical music, but in 2011, she dropped out. Lizzo moved to Minneapolis, Minnesota, and performed with various musical groups. She released her first album in 2013 and achieved a moderate degree of success. Her second album, which was released in 2015, also did fairly well, but Lizzo's big break arrived with her third album in 2019. She skyrocketed to stardom with one hit after the other. Lizzo has conducted concert tours and has been featured in various television and movie projects. Now moving to the summary of the lawsuit. Lizzo was the target of a lawsuit involving three professional dancers named Crystal Williams, Ariana Davis, and Noel Rodriguez, who had worked for her starting in 2021. Initially, they were contestants on Lizzo's reality television show called Watch Out for the Big Girls. Later, they became dancers on Lizzo's tour. In July 2023, the three dancers filed a lawsuit against Lizzo, her Delaware corporation called Big Girl Big Touring Incorporated, and a dance captain who worked for Lizzo named Charlene Quigley. The lawsuit contains a series of complaints about alleged events that occurred at various times and affected one, two, or all three of the dancers. These alleged events represented violations including disability discrimination, various forms of harassment, and creating a hostile work environment. Here is a summary of the 44-page lawsuit. It's important to remember that the lawsuit contains allegations which have not been tested in court. Much of this is paraphrased. Crystal and Ariana worked with the dance captain, Charlene, who would preach about her Christian religious belief system. Charlene took particular interest in the idea that Ariana was a virgin and even spoke about this topic with other people without Ariana's permission. In one of the competitions for the reality show, the contestants were told that they would be required to participate in a clothing-free photo shoot. Some contestants were not bothered by this, but Ariana was, and it caused her anxiety. She was eventually allowed to participate wearing some clothing. After being hired as tour dancers, the plaintiffs interacted with Charlene again, and she continued to talk about Christianity and sexuality. She made people uncomfortable with her discussions and with an inappropriate party trick involving a banana. She even discussed self-service activities and fantasies. Charlene became defiant and angry when asked to stop and proclaimed, quote, no job will stop me from talking about the Lord, unquote. On one occasion, while on tour, a bus driver made inappropriate comments to Crystal the comments were reported, but Lizzo's company failed to take action. The dancers were discouraged from taking additional work outside the tour, even though they were only paid for time spent on tour. On February 23, 2023, during a tour in the Netherlands, Lizzo invited Ariana and Noel to go out on the town with her. The dancers later realized that Lizzo was planning on visiting the Red Light District in Amsterdam. Ariana was pressured by Lizzo to touch a clothing-challenged performer. This made Ariana extremely uncomfortable. On March 5, Lizzo once again invited the dancers out, this time in Paris. The evening involved going to a place occupied by people suffering from a clothing deficit. Four days later, the dancers asked to be paid for time when they were on break from touring, especially considering Lizzo did not want them taking side work. The accountant for Lizzo's company admonished them for being disrespectful while on tour, but never specified what they did wrong. 
Almost all the members of the management team were white. The team accused the black members of the dance team of being lazy, unprofessional, and having bad attitudes. They did not make the same accusations against dancers who are not black. On April 20, Lizzo accused the dancers of drinking alcohol before shows. The next day, she told them that their jobs were not safe and repeated the alcohol accusation. Ariana felt pressure to explain her weight gain to Lizzo based on questions that Lizzo asked her. On April 26, Crystal was fired in a hotel lobby in front of the other dancers. On May 3, 2023, Ariana was fired after Lizzo became angry at her for audio recording a meeting. Ariana claimed that she was detained by a security guard as her phone was examined to make sure the recording had been deleted. Noelle resigned after feeling disrespected by how Lizzo handled the firing of Ariana. Lizzo aggressively approached Noelle while cracking her knuckles, closing her fists, and yelling the words, quote, you're lucky, you are so blank lucky, unquote. Noelle was convinced that Lizzo would have physically struck her if other dancers had not intervened. That concludes the summary of the lawsuit. Lizzo responded to the accusations with a lengthy statement posted on Instagram. She said that her morals had been questioned and her character had been criticized. The false allegations are as unbelievable as they sound. These sensationalized stories are from former employees who have already admitted that they were told their behavior on tour was inappropriate and unprofessional. Lizzo wrote that she has had to make difficult decisions, but she never intended to make anyone feel uncomfortable. She explained how she was open with her sexuality and expressing herself and could not allow people to use that openness to make her out to be something she is not. At the end of her statement, Lizzo specifically denied criticizing or firing employees because of their weight. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, some people have accused Lizzo of not having talent, suggesting that she has only become popular because she promotes body positivity. Other people have said that Lizzo is remarkably talented, arguing that regardless of her attitude toward her weight, she would have been successful. I think that Lizzo's level of talent could affect how well she recovers from the lawsuit. Typically, when untalented performers are accused of offenses, they don't fare too well, like it really affects their career negatively. When talented performers are accused, their talent can help them to overcome the bad press. This brings me to the question, is Lizzo a talented performer? I think that Lizzo's speaking voice is pretty good. She is a reasonably talented voice actor. Her singing voice is not special. It's clearly not her strong suit. However, she has other talents. For example, she is very skilled with the flute and has a unique performing style. More than straightforward vocal talent, people are attracted to Lizzo because she inspires them. Her music contains themes of self-love and confidence. Overall, I would say that Lizzo does have enough talent to overcome a fair amount of negative press. She is a popular performer who many people appreciate. Item number two, in addition to the complaints contained in the lawsuit, the lawyers representing the three dancers claim that they have received additional complaints from six other people. The lawyers said that some of the complaints are actionable. This is bad news for Lizzo. It makes it seem as though there may be additional complaints, or at least witnesses who may be willing to testify against her. This is not necessarily a matter of just three people being upset. Lizzo caught the attention of several people. Item number three, what are my thoughts on the lawsuit? There are many different incidents revealed in the lawsuit. Most of them fit into the larger theme of Lizzo being unprofessional, mean, hypocritical, and having boundary problems. The allegations regarding harassment at the nightclubs are probably the most worrisome. If what the dancer said is true, this is particularly damaging for Lizzo. It makes it seem as though Lizzo did not respect the autonomy of the dancers. She enjoyed pushing them into a sexually charged environment when that is not what they wanted. Other complaints were not as strong, like Ariana being uncomfortable with the photo shoot in the end, she was allowed to wear clothing for it, so her concern was adequately resolved. I also consider the complaints about the money to be minor. A lot of people don't like 
how much they get paid for work, and how that pay is structured. The complaints concerning the dance captain talking about religion were not the strongest, in my opinion. A lot of people talk about religion at work. However, if the allegations are true, her behavior would represent a violation. This complaint could speak to the overall lack of control that Lizzo had over her staff. The same thing could be said of the bus driver complaint. The concerns over racism are alarming, but I don't think they are well supported. The key evidence supporting racism involved a white management team only criticizing black dancers. If those particular dancers were underperforming, regardless of race, how was Lizzo's company supposed to respond? Her company must be permitted to criticize employees. I think it would be different if there was a pattern of only criticizing the black dancers that continued for a long time. But a few critical comments don't necessarily point to racism. As far as Lizzo accusing the dancers of drinking alcohol, were they drinking alcohol? If they were, Lizzo was allowed to say something about it. Based on the allegations, Lizzo did not handle the dismissal of Crystal and Ariana very well, but I'm not sure she violated any laws there. If Lizzo aggressively approached Noel after Noel resigned, that would be bad news. But I have a problem with this element of the complaint. It involves mind reading by suggesting that Lizzo would have attacked if the dancers did not intervene. Nobody knows what Lizzo would have done. She can't be held accountable for what she may have been thinking. The complaint about Lizzo asking Ariana about her weight is serious in the sense that Lizzo has been a champion of body positivity. This makes Lizzo seem like a hypocrite. This complaint, however, may not be well supported. Ariana said she felt pressure to explain her weight to Lizzo. Like the other complaint about the aggression, this one gets into mind reading. Was Lizzo actually pressuring anyone, or did Ariana simply feel pressured? What do I think of the lawsuit as a whole? When weighing the evidence presented in the lawsuit, I think it makes sense for Lizzo to settle this case out of court. It would cost a relatively small amount of money compared to the value of her career. There are just too many ways she can lose. The allegations regarding the nightclubs, in particular, are devastating, and Lizzo's statement about being open with her sexuality almost feels like a confession. Also, Lizzo's remark about the dancers admitting to being told their behavior on tour was inappropriate is illogical. All that she is really saying is that they acknowledge that they were accused of something. Lizzo has also acknowledged that she has been accused of something. Does that make her guilty? As far as the public relations angle, there is enough ambiguity where Lizzo can defend herself and recover. I'm not convinced this is going to tip the scales and weigh her career down. Moving to my final item, number four. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Lizzo had to contend with a lot of hardships to become successful. For example, she was subjected to criticism about her weight. Even now, people criticize her attitude regarding body positivity as normalizing obesity. She has had difficulty escaping the role of the villain. Many people who have been mistreated make a pledge to never do that to anyone else, kind of like a woman who is yelled at by her mother promising to never yell at her own daughter. It's not always easy to keep that promise. Some people in this situation become exactly what they despise. With Lizzo, it's possible that she treated her dancers like other people treated her. She hired people who looked like her and then, allegedly, had concerns about their weight. Or put another way, she added weight to the argument. Maybe Lizzo was playing out all the animosity that had been directed toward her against these dancers. It was like a catharsis. It made Lizzo feel better about herself. Now she was the one in charge. Now she was the one who could criticize a person's weight with impunity. It was her turn to be on the winning team, to experience the feeling of domination. Perhaps the profound lesson in this case isn't found in the details about how Lizzo treated the dancers, but rather in the larger theme of how a victim can transform into a perpetrator. All those unkind comments she received about her size crushed her. By criticizing others, she lightened the load. In this sense, the Lizzo lawsuit could be thought of as an indictment of all unkindness toward people who have difficulty regulating their weight. Those are my thoughts on the 
lawsuit against Lizzo. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.